What's going on, everyone? Thank you for listening to this episode of The Sit Down. Um, yeah, still in uh, New York City, kicking it. Um, about to head to San Gennaro in a little bit, actually, right after shooting this podcast, and then headed to San Gennaro for the first time in my entire life. So I'm pumped about that. Pumped about that, meeting up with some buddies, shooting some content. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that don't follow me on Instagram, which you totally should, at the Wooden Spoon Media, your boy signed up for the Zeppelin eating contest on Wednesday the 22nd. So if you're in New York City, Wednesday the 22nd, I don't even know what time it is. Let me check on what time it is. I signed up for the Zeppelin eating contest. So that should be a freaking blast. There was like pizza eating, cannoli, meatball, and then Zeppelin. And I go, what would I be the best in? Yeah, there's the cannoli eating contest. I don't think I could do that. Zeppelin eating competition, 1 to 2.30 um, on September 22nd. So there's that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I couldn't do the meatball or the cannoli. I think I would die doing that. But Zeppelin, your boy's going to whack out some Zeppelin. I'm beating everybody at that contest. That's an easy dub for me. But um, yeah, so we're shooting some vlogs. Tuesday, I'm going to be there with a special guest shooting some vlogs and some fun YouTube stuff. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, yeah. Um, last week in the Bronx was awesome on Arthur Avenue for the Fedagosto. Um, We killed it in sales. It was um, it was awesome. Everyone came out. We can only sell spoons this year, but hopefully next year we'll be able to do the whole shebang. But even with just with spoons, we were, I was so, so busy. Shout out to everybody. There's one guy who paid for a spoon and never came back. Didn't want to leave his phone number with me. But um, if, you, if you're listening to the podcast and you got the spoon, Nancy with a heart, um, hit me up and I'll ship you out your spoon. <laughs> but, but yeah, so the Bronx was awesome. Arthur Avenue was a blast. Got to meet uh, Chris Ruggiero, Mikey from Official Italians, Official, official Italians, one of the really big um, – Instagram pages. So that was fun. Got to meet a ton of people. Yeah. And just been chilling in New York city. I'm super, super excited for San Gennaro. Uh, a 10 day festival. Maybe who knows, maybe next year we'll be working it. Be selling shirts. We'll be shooting some more content every day. It's 11. I think it's 11 days. That's a commitment. I was tired just every weekend of August, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That was crazy. Well, what else is going on? We got a special guest coming up. We're bringing on Danny from Time Memorial, my favorite meme page, publicly known, my favorite meme page on Instagram, Time Memorial. He's the owner of that. He is also the, one of the co-founders of Soprano Con, Mob Movie Con, Virtual Cons. So I'm super excited to talk to him. We're going to talk everything Sopranos, Soprano Con, Virtual Cons, Mob Movie Con, and the very anticipated Many Saints of Newark, which I'm so excited about. So excited about it. Let's talk about that for a little bit. So the Many Saints of Newark is the pre, for those, for those of you living under a rock and not a fan of the Sopranos, the Many Saints of Newark is a prequel to the Sopranos. And it is going, it is the movie I'm most excited for my entire life. If you think about all like the people that grew up with, uh, just for example, say Spider-Man, they only saw Spider-Man comics growing up. That's all they did was spider-man comics i don't know about the cartoon and then they got that toby Maguire movie in whatever year it was that was the biggest movie of their life or somebody in the 70s that followed star wars and like i don't I, I don't even think it compares to star wars or like i don't know but the sopranos is something that i've been the biggest fan of for almost 10 years watched it when i was a junior junior in high school is the first time i watched but even before that i remember watching it when i was um, way too young to be watching The Sopranos, but I remember the last, the very last season, season six, and I remember watching it with my mom and my dad, and in front of the TV, we watch HBO, and we, I remember the very famous ending scene. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen The Sopranos, but it's also been off the air for over a decade. But I remember, um, I was on a mob movie kick in high school. I would just come home and watch movies, and I was like, you know what? I'm out of movies. I felt like it was, I was binging TV shows before it was cool. And I looked in their closet because it was before we had Netflix or anything like that and opened the closet and um, Soprano season one was there. I go, you know what? Let's pop it on see what happens. And instantly hooked. I've watched it four or five, six times since then. And always like watch one episode here. So 
I'm the biggest fan of Sopranos for and for a movie to be coming out now after I've watched this show repeatedly with no expectation of a movie for 10 years. This is the, the m- movie I'm most excited for in my entire life. And I cannot wait. It follows Dickie Moltisanti, which is Christopher's dad. That's why they call it Many Saints. Moltisanti, Many Saints. It's the translation. But it follows uh, Dickie Moltisanti coming up in the 60s, 70s. And it's a mob movie. David Chase says, this is a mob movie. We're making a mob movie. It's not an origin s- story of Tony Soprano, which would have been just as cool. Um, shout out to Michael Gandolfini for playing Tony Soprano, his dad's role. I can't even imagine like the absolute craziness of that situation, but he's playing young Tony. He looks incredible in the trailers. Like I keep, I watch the trailers over and over and over. I'm so excited for this movie. It's right now it's the 17th. So I have 13 days. I have two weeks to wait for this freaking movie. Right. And I can't wait. It's going to be, cause I want, I'm going to go see it in theaters. So apparently there in a, in a week from now, there's a, uh, a premiere at the Beacon Theater in New York City with all cast. But of course, you got to be vaccinated to go and not to get political, but I'm not getting vaccinated. Don't want to. Anyways, so I'm not going to that. Fucking de Blasio. Anyways, not going to that. So I got to wait till October 1st. I got to go see it in the theaters. I'm not seeing it at home because I know what will happen if I see it at home. Someone's going to interrupt the movie. Someone's going to call my phone. Someone's going to need to go to the bathroom. And I don't want that shit. I want to watch the movie straight through like it's intended because i watch it now with certain people and they pause it they go to the bathroom they pause it and you know what i'm not ruining what david chase created for a phone call or anything we're gonna see it in the movies and that's that's it but if i have to watch it inside because i can't find a theater that won't let you in without a vaccination card i gotta watch it inside but i gotta turn i gotta like make an emp turn off all the devices except the tv lock the bathroom door get all the snacks prior and set it, click it and hear that HBO sound and watch the Sopranos or the many saints of Newark. I'm, it's going to be hard the whole day of October 1st, not watching the movie, even midnight, midnight on September 30th. Once it hits midnight, I don't know what time it goes on HBO max, but it's going to be tough not watching. I'm so excited. Uh, a couple things that I hope to see is um, I'm watch, I'm rewatching the Sopranos. I'm almost done. I got two episodes left. So I'm like hearing like old stories that they tell, like sticking up uh, Fuchs Lamana's card, Tony sticking up Fuchs Lamana's card game. I hope that's in there. I just watched the scene where Polly talks about somebody dosed him with acid. He goes, and Junior had laser beams shooting out his eyes. So I hope something like that's in there. I don't know, but I don't think it's going to disappoint. I'm so excited for it. You guys can hear it in my voice right now. Also, if you listen to my voice, I sound a little sick. I think I'm getting sick. I hope it's not the vid. Not kind of what. You know what I'm knocking on? I'm knocking on an unengraved spoon that you could order at the woodenspoonstore.com with any engraving you want on it. Use code sit down for 15% off. But nonetheless, let's bring on our guest. I'm super excited to talk to him again. He's um, He runs my favorite meme page, the meme page that I repost the most. And I'm fortunate to have been fe- featured on his page a bunch of times for making Sopranos content. Cause you know, I love making Sopranos content. If I didn't have the wooden spoon, strictly Italian content, I would make strictly Sopranos content. That's how big of a fan I am. So ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on our guest. All right, guys, welcome our guest. Um, He just told me he's known by a couple different names. I know Miss Danny from Time Memorial. He's the co-founder of Sopranos Con, Mob Movie Con, Virtual Cons. You might know Miss Kevin Finnerty as well online. Um, Thank you for uh, coming on, Danny. I really appreciate it. Man, thank you for having me, man. Sorry it's taken so long. No, no, no worries at all. I actually, this couldn't be more perfect of a timing because we got the Many Saints of Newark coming out in uh, a couple weeks. Yeah, I'm so excited so excited <laughs> I, know. I was just, i was just saying i was doing like i do a little intro of the podcast before i bring my guests on and i was saying this is like the movie that i've never been more excited for a movie in my entire life before and you've you've got to be thinking like the same boat no I re- i'm probably now yes um when this was announced two years ago or so and then you start getting uh the the cast trickling out i was worried i'm not gonna lie because Sopranos is casted like so authentically Mm -hmm. Um, and when you start seeing a lot of non-Italian names playing the characters that we've been watching for like 20-25 years yeah I know that they got to have a Hollywood factor because like the way the way these things work nowadays is the more of an audience that they can push this out to 
the better it does. So when you have people with these huge followings from different pockets of, uh, of niches and fan bases, let's say, um, I get it, you know, but uh, these big names now, now all of a sudden, now that I'm seeing like the trailers and such, like I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much excited. You know, and always was, I was always going to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I, I was worried for a, a, a good year or so. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it looks, it looks great. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, there's never been anything. Cause I mean, I discovered, I feel like I discovered this or like, I guess rediscovered it because I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure how old you are. I think you, you've obviously watched it when it came out to begin with. Right. Well, I, okay. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've been telling people I'm 30 for the past six years until I'm 40, I'll be 40. Um, I'm sorry, until I'm 40, I'll be 30. But yeah, yeah I, I didn't start watching the show live. The first live show that I saw was uh, probably season four. No, oh, wow. season three, that's when the wait, I believe that's the wait. I'm, I don't, hopefully, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, my mind is so jumbled right now. Hopefully I don't yeah. get flamed here for being like a Sopranos aficionado or whatever. But um, I didn't start watching it live like religiously until season five because I just didn't grow up with HBO. Um, it was harder to watch these things back then. Um, didn't have the streaming devices and services and such. So, I know, so true. Yeah. So my, my, I was over, I used to just be really into movies um, and didn't really care for TV at all, unless if it was things like Seinfeld. Um, and I went over to my friend's house and his dad was watching it with him. And I was like, what is this? Like, I have to watch this. Um, and I just went to Blockbuster and I bought like the previewed DVDs for like probably probably at the time they were probably like closer to like 10 bucks. Oh my God, um, you know, it's so much more now. <laughs> I discovered eBay and I like, you know, I bought all the seasons and I just like, I just locked myself in my room. I don't know for, I don't know how many weeks. I just like just watched the show in every free moment I had. So yeah. I remember here I we are. I know, and here we are how, how many years later. I remember <laughs> watching because I was like, I was still, I had to have been maybe I like under 10 years old. And I remember like the last, the last part B of season six, I remember watching all of that. And so I think my parents kind of fucked me over because I watched that as like a kid and then I rediscovered it in high school and I kind of already knew like what happens at the end. Right. Yeah. So I, I felt like I maybe got screwed over a little bit. Well, I will say this, the replay value of the show is just like so ridiculously good oh, yeah. that even if you've seen the episodes a hundred times, you might start an episode and be like, oh yeah, like this happens, but then you keep watching and you're like, oh, I forgot that that was part of this storyline. Yeah. And as you get older too, especially in my situation, you know, I'm like, I'm watching it from a new lens every time I watch it, you know, I'm a father know. now, so it's a little bit different, um, but you discover things um, and the show is just, the show, the show is just more about like everyday life. So it's not like these huge buildups and these huge cliffhangers and mm -hmm. it, it's just, there's not like a big reveal at the end of every episode. It's just like a lot of little things that you can watch over and over and over again and you're, and you can get a new appreciation for it every time. So that, that probably did fuck you over a little bit if you knew how it ended, but yeah. when you're able to watch it again and you can, and you know that you probably are picking up things along the way that you're like, Oh, like that now, now it's connecting a little bit more. For sure. For sure. So let's, um, let's, I guess let's take it back because I've been a fan, like following your time Memorial. It's my, it's I've gone on record saying it's my favorite Instagram account. You have my absolute favorite Instagram account. Thank you. Like more so Thank than you. my, more so than my own. It's like, <laughs> Cause I'll just, I'll just like, whenever I'm like, just like, just like bored or something, I'll go scroll through your Instagram account and just laugh my ass off for just like 10 minutes at a time. Dude, that really means a lot. It means a lot. I mean, like I, I'm only doing this because, uh, well, I only started doing it because, you know, it was some, I read something a long time ago that was like, you know, you can, uh, whatever your passion is, you know, you can make it like maybe not your living, but that's how I read it. Like you're living in at the beginning. It was like, well, I'm a fan of the Sopranos. Like I love the show. I probably know it better than I know anything else. You know, I, I told, I, jo I joked with my friend the other day, like, you know, if someone's car is broken down the side of the road. It's like, I can't help you. Um, <laughs> but if someone needs to know like what episode, you know, Johnny sack, like beats the shit out of somebody and pisses on it. I was like, yeah, I can tell you that. Like I, I can basically only help you like when it's something Sopranos related. So yeah. if you're on, um, if you're on, if you want to be a millionaire and it's a Sopranos related question. Yeah. Please use me as your lifeline. Yeah. <laughs> use me as your lifeline. I can, I can help for sure. 
Yeah. So how'd you, um, how'd you get into everything? Like, what do you do like full-time? Like, obviously now I'm sure things have changed a little bit with Sopranos con and virtual cons, but let's kind of like go into like your origin story almost. How'd you, like, what do you do? Like you're from Baltimore. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. I live in Baltimore. Um, born and raised. I did spend about four years in England growing up. Um, my father was in the NSA, so we did, we did a lot of traveling. Um, but, um, I inherited, let me, I'll, I'll take it back to the very beginning. I, I was following a page on Facebook. This is maybe like 15 years ago. And back then on Facebook, you didn't, you had pages, but they weren't as um, advanced as they are now. Yeah. So what people would do would be, they'd create pages as like personalities of TV characters or celebrities. I remember that on MySpace, them doing right. that on MySpace. Yeah, too. it was around the same time. And I was, I don't know how I started following it, but it was called like Anthony John Soprano. <laughs> um, I guess Tony Soprano was taken and it was inactive. So that was why I was following this one. And he maybe had like five or 10,000 followers. And one day it was just like, hey, I don't have time for this. I need to give it to somebody oh, who can shit. actually like curate it. And he's like, please message me why you know, you think you're, you're, uh, you know, up to it and why you're the right fit. And at this time I was like, dude, I've, I have literally watched the show from beginning to end and end to beginning. So in reverse, like probably at this oh. time, like 50 to a hundred times, I was like, I can name you everything about the show that happens. I'm not like great about like the directors and the writers and the actors yet. I was like, but as far as the story goes, and as far as fandom goes, like I'm definitely up there with anybody. Um, and he just decided to give it to me. And when I finally got access, you know, I saw that there were hundreds and hundreds of requests. So I was just lucky to be chosen. And um, I just rebranded it to be my own at that mm-hmm. point. I, so I changed the name to Time Immemorial. And um, it really just started as, you know, YouTube clips, screen caps, you know, t- quotes from the show, mm-hmm. nothing really original, but maybe, um, maybe a couple years into it, I just noticed that there were other pages that were essentially doing the same thing. And I was trying to separate myself from them. And this is also around the time where I, I remember going up to my friend, Ronnie, and being like, do you, do you know what memes are? Um, I was like, it's like a cat. I was like, remember it's like a white caption box and like a picture that kind of like makes fun. It's like conveying information. And he's like, yeah, I think I know what you mean. I was like, Sopranos has like such a comedic depth to oh, it. For sure. That I think that we could do something with this. And um I just started searching online for other people's work just to see if it had been done. And around the same time, it maybe had been like three months after Sopranos Graham, if you're, if you're following them, Mm -hmm. I just got on Instagram and searched Sopranos and memes and then there they were. So, um, you know, we spoke a lot and, um, we started cross promoting each other and I started making my own. I, I, at the beginning, I was giving him ideas Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't have the means to create them, but I did go to school for graphic design. So, um, I was, that was, I was, that was also a question I needed to ask you because some of them, like they look great and like they're edited a certain way. So I was like, do you have like graph, you must have graphic design background. Yeah. I mean, I went to school for graphic design and when I graduated in, I don't know, like Oh nine, Oh eight, something like that. Um, the market was just so saturated. So I couldn't find a job doing what I wanted to do. I, I took a lot of contract jobs, but graphic design can be a CD album. It could be a flyer. But it could also be like technical design where you're like, I ended up taking these contract jobs for schools where I was like designing their answer page booklet for the teachers. Oh, and nice. it's just very intricate and not what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife um, in, uh, I guess it was 2000, yeah, 2000, 2011 is probably when we found out that I was, we were having my, my first child. So um, we, I just like immediately like that like triggered something in me where I just started pretty much taking whatever I thought that I could get to advance myself. And Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up being a private investigator and that, as you might, you might assume plenty of free time, you know, I'm, I'm sitting parked in front of people's houses, following them, taking pictures, videoing. (laughs) And a lot of the time though, you're just sitting there. So, um, I did devote a lot of, a lot too much time to HBO go and everything at the time, but that's when I started downloading apps to like just mess around with artwork and just started making my own memes. And um, I guess I've been on Instagram now for maybe like three years, um, roughly. So during the time, it was just about having fun and just reaching. uh, It takes a very special kind of fan to 
not just like Sopranos content, but also like a meme as well, because oh, sure. you have to like both, first of all. And second, at the beginning of this, it was really like more like if you're not a hardcore fan, you're not going to get some of these. And as time has progressed, I've been trying to just be a little bit more um, have a mindset of like trying to uh, connect with as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of lucky that the sh that you know the pandemic um, increased a lot of like the younger generation start watching the show again. Memes become more popular, as you know. You know, memes are like a primary form of marketing for a lot of huge companies yeah. now. So memes became a lot more popular over this time. And um, you know, I just met some people online along the way, um, and um, that's how Sopranos Con was born. I, I met someone online and. I think his name is Joe Fama. And I thought that he was just reaching out to me to help him push out his business, which was uh, mm -hmm. merchandise and printing and all that kind of stuff at the beginning. Um, and he was like, look, I want to present you with this idea. Um, you know, I work a lot of events and conventions and my wife and I have been dreaming this thing up for like four or five years. Like, let me get your thoughts on it. And at the same time, I had built up my audience privately and publicly to like roughly 150,000 people. And I was trying with the private group, it was around 15 or 20. And I was trying to do something positive with that group because we talked so much. Mm -hmm. um, just have a meetup maybe somewhere, maybe we can get a cast member or two there. Um, and when I saw this idea, I was like, this is amazing, but you can't actually do all this stuff, right? And he's like, well, if you have the money and you have the connection, yeah. you absolutely can. And I was like, okay, well, I was like, I did see somebody in my Facebook group post something about like Federico and um, who played Furio and uh, who else was it? Uh, J uh, Jason Serbone who played Jackie Jr. and Dan Grimaldi played Patsy and Vincent Pastore who played Big Pussy. And I was like, someone in my group posted something about like hosting an event with these guys. Um, let me see if I can find it. And it just took me about a, an hour or two to go back like a year mm -hmm. to find the post. I found the guy, I messaged him and you never know if someone's going to even respond to your messages on social. And when I finally got a hold of him, you know, it really was almost an instantaneous response because he happened to be a marketer. He happened to also be a, uh, an event venue owner, you know? So when he heard the idea, he loved it as a fan, but he also knew that I had this huge audience and he's like, we used like half the battles already won, he's like, but I do know a lot of these guys personally. So like, um, you know, if you, if you want to do this with me, like I need to be a partner um, and we'll take it from there. And that's, that's how the whole thing was born. We didn't anticipate there being uh, such a huge positive reaction to 2019, which is when the first one we did, mm -hmm. but that uh, we envisioned that being like 10, 15, 20 cast members. It turned into 55, like, you know, that's with insane. Five. That's so great. And it was all the way from like, you know, top build casts all the way down to someone who may have only been in it for a minute. And mm -hmm. the way we looked at it at the beginning was uh, if you had anything to do with the show and you want to come, we're not going to tell you no, because this cast is an, the, the, the show is an ensemble. You know, it's not just about James Gandolfini um, it, and, and the main cast. It's really about all the supporting cast as well. So we just wanted to celebrate the show. And um, we only thought that was going to be a one-time thing. And uh, that got, uh, you know, that we just got such positive feedback. You know, we got reached out to by Caesars Entertainment, like right before it started. So they didn't wow. even have, they didn't even know like what we were capable of doing yet. Um, but between me and Michael Mata, who's the guy who I mentioned about knowing the cast members mm -hmm. and having a, a venue and being a marketer and Joe, who was able to handle like all the printing and production and building um we just meshed together really well and they wanted to bring conventions to atlantic city and you know we just expanded on the idea this past july um we luckily just like narrowly missed like a new mask mandate and we were coming off the heels of the pandemic so that we expanded on the idea by saying um instead of just focusing on the sopranos let's let's focus on the entire mob movie genre um, because then we can invite more people and we can keep this going uh, as opposed to just continuously doing the same thing over and over and over again. So that's what we did. And here we are. I mean, the, 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 that spawned an app and, you know, it's not been easy. I'll, I will tell you that a lot, a lot of people think that we're just 
having fun all the time. And, and oh, no, no. I know as like a social media marketer and a business owner, I know what goes in this because I see I, I obviously I look from a distance. I see everything you guys are doing. And I'm like, holy shit. Like that's it's not easy because like I put on uh, just one comedy show. Like I know what goes into just one comedy show with one comic an opener and, and 300 seats. I know the headaches of just that. I can't even imagine 55 plus cast members um bringing in cars and memorabilia it's so intricate, like, man it really is it's like you know uh, I, I i love that from a distance if you're not in your position like yourself people think that it's just like oh like it just like kind of falls together I, I love that it comes off that way but the reality yeah. is that you know everyone's a personality that's first and foremost yeah. second you have unions to deal with you have just like every like one thing that you want to do takes 50 steps Yep. And if you don't have a team to build the infrastructure that you need, you're just going to be going crazy and like running around like a madman. And, and we still do, you know, like uh, mm. leading up to July, I didn't, I probably got like four hours of sleep over the course of three days leading up to this event. It's just like a constant grind and a constant hustle throw in there that the pandemic hit us like right after the event. Yeah. Um, a few months after the event, like while we were planning a new one, um, we decided like, hey, what can we do to stay relevant and keep busy, get funded, et cetera. And we only wanted to create an app to allow people that couldn't attend these events to be able to watch it and stream it. That's all we really wanted to do. Um, we're still not completely there yet, um, but it's a, that even that has evolved into the many different components that we have now so yeah i i hopped on the app it's it's fascinating i think it's such a great idea being able to like communicate with like the personalities like you see cameo blows up like crazy and right and then you guys have that and it's plus like and you add to that in like your own way and it's it's freaking genius for those of you that don't know the virtual cons app you could go on you could request like shout outs from people that like old cast members it's not just the sopranos but other mob movie figures and like acting lessons with um, vince cartola i think like insane stuff so how did that like how did like those ideas all pop up it really like i said it start it started as like let's just create a place our own platform our own platform where we can stream our own events um because when you use facebook and youtube for example if you start even if they pick up on like one little music line in the background it's going to get shut down yep. because it's matching an algorithm and copyright infringement, et cetera, when really it's just like a DJ in like the mm -hmm. background. Um, so we wanted to bypass all that. And then we realized that Cameo was on the rise. And then we're like, well, let's just bring the convention experience to people, not just the streaming side. And that convention experience is what? Like waiting in line to get an autograph, talk to these guys for a few minutes. So the meet and greet angle was added. We're trying to uh, facilitate and, and keep in mind, like, yes, the app is live. You can get it in the Google Play Store. You can get it in the Apple Store, but it's it's getting a total, for the last three, three months, it's been getting a total overhaul. And what we envision this is to look more like an HBO Max or a Netflix model, because we're gonna be creating content um, and streaming more than just the Sopranos stuff and mob movie stuff. So we are organizing still we're not we're not there yet um but you know it, it is like I, I appreciate the kind words because it really has been uh, a grind for since since the pandemic started you know we, we are all working like 12 to 15 hours a day for the most part so it's it's uh it's been a very interesting ride so far i know i was so i'm like sorry i couldn't come to I had just a crazy July and August. I couldn't make it out this year. And I, I had like the worst FOMO of my entire life in July. <laughs> well, hopefully like, we do it again. I mean, like we don't, we, yeah. I mean, with this pandemic, it makes things a little bit, well, I guess the pandemic's over, but the, 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 what well, the quarantine is over, the pandemic yeah. is still here. The Delta variant is back. So it, it kind of puts a damper on things. We don't want to host something big like that unless we know yeah, everything's safe. people are comfortable coming out. I mean, like that's the, that's the primary aspect. It's, it makes sense if you're in like Russia and you can't fly over to watch mm -hmm. it, you know, but primarily we're either targeting like a tri-state area. So for in New Jersey, we're hitting New York and Philadelphia also. Mm -hmm. uh, if we move over to the West Coast, we do, we did have plans to do this in Vegas and that was supposed to be in November, but that's not happening anymore. So yeah. we are trying, um, but it also requires a little bit of a wait too. So 
Yeah. So what are like what it like in a perfect world? What is like the plans? Is like another Sopranos con ma movie con? Like I know I saw something about like boxing con, which seemed really cool, and some of these other ones. There are some things that are going on in the background that I can't. I'm not at liberty to discuss them. Gotcha. Yet. Um, but I will say MMA and boxing is something that we really want to get into, um, and I we do like. I guess, I guess really as sad as it is, um, the Sopranos cast members, they're not Benjamin Button. You know, everybody's getting older. So there's only so long that we can do mm -hmm. something that's just Sopranos focused. We're always gonna try to highlight it as much as humanly possible and pay homage to our favorite show. But the idea has always been start transitioning slowly into just mob movie con because then we can focus on all kinds of just gangster movies. It doesn't yeah, have absolutely. to be Italian mob. Um, just bad guy films essentially um, so that's that's kind of the goal is to is to is to pivot to that um, and we're going to start doing some micro pop-up events too probably closer to where you are also um, you know we're, we're going to be doing more than than just the convention thing because that is a it, it really is a huge undertaking to do these things a lot oh, of no, I can't I can't even imagine I can't even freaking imagine like just like because I, I look at that and I think of like oh my god the insurance on that is probably crazy <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, man yeah the bills the bills are insane and yeah. um, you know nothing comes for free at these places and like I said you have the union to worry about a lot of the time um, for any venue and it's just it's just again like you know, I, I remember um sopranos graham actually is the guy's name is john and um he flew in on the friday before we had like so much work to do for the mob movie awards that we threw mm -hmm. and every time we sat down and you'll you, he can attest to it it's like every time we sat down every three seconds i'm getting called from this person i'm getting called from that person and we weren't able to finalize this until like literally 30 minutes before the show started wow so it's just, um, you know, it's, and it's because we're not exactly where we want to be yet as far as like the infrastructure and the help that we need, but um, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Wow, so it's, 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 it's been a, like I said, it's been a fun ride so far. Yeah. So, I mean, like on, on some separate notes, like what were, like, who are some of like the, like, I guess the, cause you've obviously met like the coolest people from Tony Sirico to Federico to like all these people, who was like the person that almost surprised you the most on like, Cause I remember, cause we almost, we missed each other by like what, 10 minutes in Buffalo. Oh, right. Yeah. Like that comic con. We literally missed, I was, it was so funny. We missed each other by like 20 minutes. Cause when I met Ada Tuturo, like she like shocked my whole world on how nice of a person she was. Yeah. She sit and oh talked God. with me and my dad for like 15, 20 minutes, just shooting the shit. She is, um, Aida is, um, <laughs> you go into this, you go into meeting these guys, like everybody's put on a pedestal, right? For mm -hmm. years, you put all these guys on this pedestal where they're like almost untouchable. They're like, they're almost like figments of your imagination. Like you're never going to be able to get to them. That That's at least how I looked at it. Like they were just on this level that you're never going to be able to touch. And um, you go into it with these expectations and that can work for you or against you very quickly. Um, most of these guys and girls are so nice and they're just they're just like so thrilled that they're the fan base is still not just thriving but growing you mm -hmm. know and the younger generations are coming in have a new appreciation for the show and they're just kind of like astonished that it's still as popular as it is um and we've seen this resurgence and the film has helped with that um aida is so nice um Federico is, is an incredibly funny guy. Mm -hmm. um, the, the person that probably shocked me the most was probably Tony Sirico because he's exactly how he is in the show. And <laughs> he's a little bit older now, but the, maybe it's because it was Columbus Day and then maybe it was because it was in his own house, you know, that we got to go meet him. But he was like busting our balls constantly, just like very like quick, like sharp witted um, and just very personable. Um, you know, but, but all these guys, you see them as bad guys. I mean, David Proval is like one of the sweetest guys that you could yeah. ever meet. Um, and it's, they're all, I, I really have nothing bad to say about anybody. Ray Abruzzo is, uh, who played little Carmine. He is, he is hysterical and, and, and very personable. Like he just, they all really care about like what, uh, what you think about them. Like, and, and they want to spend time with you. They want to hear what you have to say. They want to talk to you. And, um, you know, it's, it's, 
it's unfortunately worked opposite too for some people like i said i have nothing really bad to say about anybody but like mm. i can't really watch the show the same anymore because uh. of all of it so anyone out there i would say you know like obviously um i'm i don't want to say i'm living proof but i mean like i'm i'm I, I at least have proven that if whatever it is that you love chase it and maybe something good will come out of it um but at the same time be careful what you wish for because you know, it could end up uh, ruining how you watch the show and how you think about these people. So, I mean, it's oh, it's man. it's uh, it's been great, but I can't watch the show the same anymore because it's like it's just the nature of it all is that you know you have so many conversations with them eventually that you're gonna you're gonna be like, oh, I remember talking to that person. <laughs> that, that person was <laughs> nice to me. Um, but you know, for the most part, I'd say literally like ninety nine point nine percent of all my interactions have yeah. always been positive. So it's 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 been great. It's been awesome. I know I've caught, I mean, I've said this before where I've caught an actor. I caught, I met Jeremy Piven in public one time, which he, act, we actually like ended up making up, but like he was a, it was a crazy meet and greet too. <laughs> it wasn't even meet and greet. Yeah. I, met him, I met him just ironically in Philadelphia on a family vacation in Philadelphia. He was running the Rocky steps, which we, on my fault, to my dad and I's fault, we, we like kind of like went up to him while he was working out on the Rocky steps. Oh, wow. Well, dude. That, first of all, that's amazing. I remember when I was the first like celebrity I ever met as a kid. We were in Hawaii as, when I was in like eighth grade and we met like AC Slater from Saved by the Bell. Oh, so cool. um, and, and, and he and it was like for us, we were all like starstruck. But I mean, like he was incredibly nice. But there's a reason why they tell you don't meet your heroes yeah. because you don't know how they really are outside of like the sporting event that you're watching or the television show or the movie that you're, you're used to seeing them in because they're acting and they're... Um, everyone's a person you know so yeah. th there's a reason why they say that and there's i won't say anyone's names but there i had one uh confrontation with someone who, um who just didn't really understand memes um and <laughs> you know i'm i'm like you know i'm only trying to connect the fan base and keep it going um and this person like took like huge offense and we've made up since then but like that like was a huge shock for me to be like kind of like uh, yeah that's weird too because like at the end of the day like a lot like your stuff obviously i've never seen anything like hurtful but like it's jokes so there's just comedy at the end of the day so it's yeah i mean that's all i'm really trying to do i mean the fact that people even find it funny i mean like that's uh, that's really all i can ever really ask for yeah. you know is that like if somebody uh like and and look i've had i've had tweets and memes you know like 200,000 likes. I've had some that are 200, you know, and I'm telling you now there's, there's no real difference in feeling in terms of uh, the fact that you're even connecting with anybody is the I same know, feeling awesome. across the board, you know? So that's really all I'm doing this for. Um, at this point now, it's a little bit different. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm combining comedy most of the time, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to be funny, obviously, because that's the nature of memes, but sometimes I'm kind to connect comedy with a call to action, which may be going to an event mm -hmm. um, we, or many scenes of Newark, for example, like they, Tribeca reached out to us and like, you know, I'm, I'm doing some of the marketing for them. So it's, uh, it's interest. It's been an interesting ride. Like I said, because I didn't go to school for marketing. I just went to school for graphic design, but it's just, it's just about having that fan base and being able to connect with people. I mean, a meme, a meme is literally just conveying a feeling or a sentiment or just regular information, whether it's something in pop culture or politics or just day-to-day -day life. Yeah. I mean, that's all you're really doing. Yeah, um, that's so why, that's why not to know. That's why like you're like one of your pages are my favorite because you almost need to like understand like three or four points to get like the meme and it makes it like so much better. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes I'm literally just like trying to echo a feeling that I think a lot of people experience, mm -hmm. but like you said, sometimes it's more about like a you have to know you have to know what the sopranos is yeah b you have to know what storyline i'm talking about or like what character i'm talking about and then also the feeling or the the sentiment or whatever it may be so it's um i wouldn't want to say it's like smart comedy it's just about uh it's just about like you're it's, it's so niche mm -hmm. um that you, it takes a That's very true. specific kind of fan um to to really to really connect with it so For it's sure. a combination For it's a combination sure. Yeah. One last, before I let you go, I think I maybe want to like rattle off some like almost like speed Sopranos questions for you. Just like, just oh God, let's talk okay. about the show. So like, I guess like off, obviously right off the bat, like what's your favorite episode of the Sopranos? 
the test dream. Okay. So take for the those dreams now. are my favorite. I mean, if I had to choose one that is not dream oriented, I'd probably say the weight. Um, that was just like the first episode I ever saw. Um, and I just think that that, I think that every episode is essentially a movie as it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the arcs of these stories are just so fantastic. Awesome. All right. Next one. Who's your favorite character? If you had to pick one. If it's not Tony, you know, I, I probably relate to Chrissy more, but Paulie is somebody that like, you know, you, you want to see him. Yeah. Um, but you know, there are elements of AJ too that you know, like I, I connect with from my childhood. I mean, I think everybody knows an AJ, but mm. um, but as far as like favorite, I probably I'd probably say after Tony, Chrissy and Polly, very close. Gotcha, awesome. Um, what happened to the Russian? <laughs> I think he just died. I mean, like I know I know that um I've read a lot of things about how they like they were going to bring him back. Um but they did, you know, yeah. um, the fact that they didn't means that like, you know, you, the, the beauty of that episode is that life isn't always buttoned up in a way that's like, you know, cut and dry and makes sense. And I think that that's all they were trying to show you is that like, yeah, it, it, I think some people think he was hiding in a tree. I think that's just ridiculous. Um, I think that he probably just curled up and died somewhere and got buried in the snow. Um, the, 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 oh, what happened to the Cadillac then? Well, I probably got towed. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. But um, I say the simple answer is that he just died, you know, and that's, and that's it. If they had brought him back, um, then they'd have a lot of explaining to do. But I yeah. just, I'm kind of glad they didn't because it's just not that kind of a show. Uh, I think they tried it. And, you know, David Chase has joked before, like, oh, like Cub Scouts found him and like this and that. But I, I he's got to be careful because people, the fans like take a lot of this stuff as like, like verbatim. And oh, yeah. I don't think that's the point of his, his answer, you know? So I, I think again, short answer, I think he just died. Okay. Two more. What do you think happened to Furio after he went back to Italy? Mm, I, I would like to say that he's, uh, do you watch the show Gamora at all? No. If you like Breaking Bad and you like the Sopranos, um, this is essentially Breaking Bad meets Sopranos in Italy. Oh. And it is, it is just amazing. Um, it's not Sopranos, mm -hmm. but it's all subtitled also. So you have to be into that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'd like to think that he probably relocated somewhere in Europe where he could still be around the Italian community, um, but just maybe not necessarily in Italy where he might be found. And he's off, you know, carrying on doing something else. Uh, Work, working, on the, working on the olive farm. <laughs> there he could be doing that or he could be you know muscle for some other crew in uh czechoslovakia i mean like who knows but that that um that's that's kind of a storyline in gamora which is why i asked because one one guy does relocate and i don't know it to be true or not but based on that show you know there's other spots in europe where there's a lot of italians where that he that he could congregate with you know so that's probably what I'd like to think happened. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely got to check that out. All right, last one. And it's the obvious question. And spoiler alert for anybody who um, is listening and hasn't finished The Sopranos. But what do you think happens at the end? Does Tony uh, die? Well, I think that's up to the viewer. I think, well, really, okay. So the answer is both. He's alive and dead. Um, in Fleshy Part of the Thigh, um, the, doctor, the Dr. Schwinn, he brings up Schrodinger's equation uh, pretty deliberately. Um, and if you're familiar with that, and anyone who wants to research this a little bit further, Google Schrodinger's Tony um, uh, and Reddit, and you'll find a pretty in-depth answer that can do it more justice than I can. But essentially, you know, you're not going to know what happens to Tony until you open the box. He's alive and dead. If you open the box, then you killed Tony essentially so they set it all up david chase says it's all there what he means is that there's enough there at least what i think he means regardless of what a lot of books and articles say and youtube videos and etc it's all there to whether or not whatever you want it's like it's all there there's, there's evidence that he's dead there's evidence that he's alive and well um and I think that it's kind of the beauty of it is that, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you and you're not wrong either way. Um, that's that to me, if anyone died for sure at the end, it's us. 
um, our screen goes black because we've been watching, we've been watching like a fly on the wall for years and years and years. And now we can't, but you know, they play don't stop believing for a reason. You, you're supposed to be thinking, I think that this world is still carrying on in the background. We just are not privy to see it anymore. Um, so that's, that's what I think happens. Or that's what I think the point of the, of the ending is. Oh, I like that. I like that more than Tony dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it, it just depends if that's what you want. I mean, it's definitely all there if you want him to die. Um, but I think that they were also talking about doing a movie, you know, after this. And they obviously wouldn't have been able to do that without James um, yeah. or, or Tony's character, you know. So um, take that for what you for what it's worth, too. If they had made a, an actual movie that carried on after that final scene, no doubt in my mind that Tony would have been in it, you know, so that would have kind of ended the discussion in terms of what happened. So it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of good that they didn't make that movie uh, a reality before he passed, obviously. Yeah. So. Well, Danny, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, I, I, I wish you the best success with virtual cons with Time Memorial. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to circle back around at the next event. I'll be able to make an appearance or show up and I'm really excited to see what you guys got going on in the future. Where could everybody just let everybody know where they could find you and follow everything. Sure. Yeah. I'm on, um, you know, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as time immemorial on Twitter and Instagram. There's an underscore at the end of the name. Um, and there's also Sopranos con my movie con and all these platforms as well. Uh, YouTube Sopranos con YouTube, um, and virtual cons is available at virtualcons.com and the Apple and Android store. Awesome, man. Well, thank you again for coming on. For everybody else listening, we will catch you in the next episode. Ciao.